Hollywood Uncensored. I'm Sam Rubin. Settle in for 30 minutes of the most candid conversation about show business anywhere. Four bright folks who actually know this stuff. Really compelling things to talk about. With a great panel, Kate Flannery, one of the rare stars of The Office, whose character has a different name, Meredith, of course. Hal Sparks makes us laugh and think in a big local live gig we'll tell you about. Carolyn Hennessy, delightfully snooty on Cougar Town, but nice elsewhere, has a best-selling <laughs> book to boot. And Scott Mance, the genius film reviewer from Access Hollywood. Let's start with a story I think is going to be one of the biggest stories of the year after the explosive and awful audio tapes. Mel Gibson is back. The new movie is called The Beaver, and frankly, the movie which I've seen is very good. And I spoke just a few hours ago with Jodie Foster about her controversial leading man. Did you ever think, oh my gosh, this screws my movie completely? But, uh, Mel Gibson gives such an extraordinary performance in this movie, and uh, you can never take your eye off that prize. I mean, I'm just so grateful for what he's given and uh, for what an incredible partner he was during the shoot and um, and for how he understood this film. He really got it in ways that a lot of people didn't get it. Um, I, I, at times, I felt very alone in uh, in, uh, in my understanding of the film and my vision of the film, and he's just been an amazing partner. How Sparks, can we, yeah. should we separate the artist from the art? Because Mel, good in a good movie, but does it make him less of a jerk? Will anybody go see it? No, absolutely not. I mean, ultimately, whether they see this or not will sort of be on, on par with uh, Edge of Darkness and the same crowd that was comfortable and okay with him being in that. His, the quality of his performance is not the point. The, the way she deflected the question <laughs> yeah. was, was, his, uh, was classic <laughs> politics. It was, it was the biggest bunt I have ever seen <laughs> of a fastball. I have, you know, it was like she pulled out a, a paddle, an oar, and just said, <laughs> dunk. Uh, no, great movie. He was so nice. That's not what I asked you. That's, but she looks really good doing it. She looks fantastic. She really, really does good look doing. The answer doesn't, it doesn't match the question for a reason, because media management is now so important, especially to his career, if there is any of it left because he's burnt everything behind him as strongly as anybody could. So everybody I, has to pretend like it doesn't exist. I think that I think Hollywood has notoriously a very short memory and I think if this if the film coming out were anything like A Lethal Weapon or A Brave Heart or Ransom something incredibly violent which would match his tone well, in those tapes, is, yeah. exactly. Which which match well, which character for the record, and He is he's a guy who talks to a beaver puppet and and he is in right. real life bad. But so the two of those things but do it's match. Fairly, it's fairly benign. And it's apparently it's very charming. And I think that if anything could resurrect his career, it will be this movie. Well, uh, to, uh, to mm -hmm. go on what you said about burning every bridge behind him, he wouldn't be the first who's done that. Polanski did it. Mike Tyson did it. Kobe Bryant Woody did Allen. it. Woody Allen. Woody Allen. Hello. He married his daughter. Well, Hello. Well, but, but, well, but, but the point you know, is, certain he did it while the, with, with the internet magnifying everything right. that happens. But there's also a huge difference between all those people you brought up have individual issues with individuals in their lives that occurred. Um, whereas Mel Gibson's the first who kind of blanketly, uh, his anti-Semitism became synonymous with his name Absolutely. due to what he was saying. Right. And, and That's a totally different thing than I had a court case with somebody and you may or may not believe that one person. This is a Holocaust denial kind of activity. This, this is, is true. It's hard, it's hard to get rid of the term oven dodger, which he used with uh, Winona yes. Ryder. I mean, it's, you know, this is the thing. When someone has a resurrection from uh, something really horrible, it takes a village. And this is, I don't think Jodie Foster's the village. No. Nope. I don't think she's current enough. I don't think she's uh, hip enough. It looks I mean, like she's an a apology. great actress. Absolutely. And, and, to, and to your point, as far as, uh, you know, whether it could be a lethal weapon or those kind of things, Edge of Darkness could have been um, um, taken, arguably, could have been on even par with Liam Neeson and Taken, and Mel Gibson, a, lar a bigger star in the uh, you know in the arc right. than Liam was up to that point. And he's all, it's almost like they've switched positions. Liam is now the safe choice for that kind of a role, and Army of, uh, Edge of Darkness and all this have sort of marginalized what? because of his, because of Mel. I, I too saw The Beaver, and I have to say it's a good movie, but it's hard Sorry. to watch. I beg your pardon. <laughs> now, listen. <laughs> I've well, never had a situation where the beaver is hard is to it, watch. Yeah, right. Is it hard to watch because of his history? It's hard to, no, it's hard to watch because it takes a very disturbing and dark turn about halfway through. For the first half of the movie, Kind of like his career. It's, <laughs> it's an <laughs> allegory. Fair enough. It's an, but, it's an wait, allegory. Wait, wait, let's just look at the movie, okay? Okay, I, I went into this movie with a lot of baggage because of everything that, yeah. uh, that happened, will. especially working for a show like Access Hollywood. I mean, mm -hmm. come on, I hear more than I really need to know. Mm -hmm. But I went into the film because I am a movie lover and I am a critic and I went in without, you know, tried not to let that affect my appreciation of the film. I think it's an unusual movie. Keep in mind that this film originally was going to star either Steve Carell 
or Jim Carrey. And if it was, and let's say it was directed by Sean Levy, who did Night at the Museum, it would have been a very broad comedy that would have opened in July. It would have been a big crowd pleaser, but it's directed by Jodie Foster. This is her third film. She does not make easy films. It's very quirky, offbeat, takes a very dark turn. It does not end with a bow and send you on your but way. But you know, the, the thing that was interesting to me is I sincerely thought and said this on the mm -hmm. air when he quote unquote blew up. Boy, this movie's never even going to come become well, I, released. I, are you are you guys yeah. surprised that it's even coming out? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, absolutely. I mean, even with the, oh, with, the, with, with his girlfriend. I mean, come on, and, right. the, and their kid. Are you kidding? That? I mean, there's no there's no way this bounces back. This movie carries. It's an odd movie to start with. There are probably 15 actors you could have made a choice that are not just broad comedians who could have handled this role and brought something interesting and kind of almost Donnie Darko to the experience. But go. the baggage of Mel Gibson will tank this. I disagree. He was I, I, I disagree. Okay, I why, think why do you disagree? I, I, because I think that, uh, character-wise, I think he is still charming enough as an actor. And I, I think, and, and I, no, I don't think it's so. Too soon. I don't think so. Well, I, don't know. I, I, don't I know. think it is no. too soon. I think it is too soon. But if I think, people he, can I think if he had tried a different genre, I think if he tried well, he an action genre or something in, like that, the Hangover then, too. Right. But well, that, that, was, was, that but might I think have been the question to soft top I think it's a double standard. I think if it were a different genre, you know what? Not too soon for us to take a quick break here. No, How was absolutely. that? For, I, I, well, uh, was that so awesome? it's worth it. Anyway. When we jump back, fun. what happens when the com goes on a brand new sitcom? What prompted NBC to cancel the show after just two episodes on the air? Plus, she's back. Lindsay Lohan has a softball interview with Jay Leno and gets a standing ovation. Uh, will she get one when she's doing 400 hours of community service? Stick with us here as Hollywood on Sunset <laughs> continues on Reels Channel's TV about movies. <laughs> Welcome you back. Can Kate Flannery keep her liquor down as we say so long to Michael Scott on The Office? Brand new episodes. Is fair? Is that fair it's to fair, say? It's fair. Um, on NBC Thursday at 9 p.m. Also on NBC this week, pre taped interview with Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay was greeted with a standing ovation, and she spoke to Jay Leno of being older and somewhat wiser. I'm not a kid anymore. I'm 24. Yeah. I've made a lot of mistakes, and I recognize that. Um, but I'm, I'm in the clear now, and I feel like as long as I stay focused, then I will be able to, you know, achieve what I want to achieve. Far be it for me to criticize the Tonight Show audience, but a standing ovation for Lindsay is all forgiven? A standing ovation for a goth chick. Uh, yeah. I mean, seriously. And you know what? I'll tell you something. I'm going to be 11 years sober in, in August. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I want Lindsay Lohan to come to me when she's got a couple of years under her belt, mm -hmm. not a couple of months. Uh, far well, be it for me to and, judge somebody based on their looks, but she looks like she's 40. She does. She well, looks, but, but less, hard let living. Us also she looks hard Let us also remind ourselves that she is a 24-year-old. And there's an element of most of this stuff started occurring when she was 19, 20 years old, in the midst of being chased around Hollywood, just going party to party. Um, under a level of scrutiny that most people don't get. I think you're, you, I mean, obviously she's serving time and she's doing community service for what she's done. But the, the, it's amazing the standard we are holding Lindsay Lohan to at 24 years of age and the past that we're allowing for Mel Gibson to have at his age. And, and for what they're being sort of accused of being. You know, she is simply a girl who drank and drove. There's Tens of the Bush and twins stole a necklace too. come yeah. to mind. Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> right, I'm just saying. right. And I agree. She's a, there's a few things. Parents are crazy, but okay. Abs but, uh, yes, but yes. right. <laughs> well, there's a, there, there are perhaps a Mel Gibson commonality. To, uh, to right. be fair, I, that's, a very, that's a very that's I mean, a very interesting yeah. point. But you think you see because I think what a lot of people think is here's somebody here's Lindsay Lohan who's been handed everything and she's talented. Yep. And has kind of blown it up, and here's Mel Gibson who sort of successfully covered up. Who he really was for a very long time. Right. right. I don't know how right. that's a good. That's like that's like saying you know Jay Edgar Hoover was a psychopath, you know, but he, nobody knew he was a tranny till it was too late. Right. That's weird. But if I think right. as I would, a justification. I would be willing to bet that the uh, studio audience that night right. did not stand up of their own volition simply because Lindsay Lohan walked on. I bet they had you know the guys <laughs> on the floor going get up, get up, uh, and too. and and they will you know the audience here they they'll stand yes. up if you ask but them. But also because this is the first time she's really gone on the record. Mm -hmm. Since right. this whole crazy right. circus that is her life came out, and here she is, she's on the Tonight Show. Yeah, you can make it. And there. these people are in the audience. Don't, don't like, you oh, this is really special. Yeah. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've always felt this way to a large degree, and it, it, it disagrees how with what you suggested. Don't you think the circus is sometimes a people's own making? Absolutely. Oh, I agree. Absolutely. But, I, but I do think there is a difference between you know, look at the number of teen stars we've seen been eaten by the process at a very young age without you know any kind of guidance and that kind of thing, versus. 
a grown man who knows perfectly well what he's saying, right. what he's saying yeah. and but doing. Let's, not, let's, not, let's yeah. not forget that The Tonight Show is the public confessional. I mean, yes. Hugh, Grant Hugh Grant went Grant. on and right. admitted that he had a trait. No, I always thought if, if Pee Wee Herman had admitted on mm -hmm. The Tonight Show that he, you know, did something well, bad, he that he would have been, shown what a but, but, yeah. but isn't this the arc now? I think this is the absolute yeah. cultural arc. You do something abhorrent. You, it's with some degree, necessary. But the public does make what? it to a circus. Look at Charlie Sheen. Okay, when he developed his Twitter account, within two days he had over a million followers. That's true. He became the people... P.T. Barnum of, the, of his own media <laughs> yeah, circus, right. though. And, and, yeah. and, 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 and we were his all Twitter account crash and burn? I mean, come on. I mean, the guy, it's like, how long can this last? You can't keep that ball the in the air very long. Right. loves well. nothing more than, than to see people fail, except to see them redeem themselves and come back. Yeah. It used to be I said totally there was absolutely. no such thing as bad press. Now there's no such thing as a bad prison sentence. <laughs> and it's almost required for a certain level of fame at a certain point. Or a bad we, we jump back here. What happens when the calm goes out of a uh, brand new sitcom? What prompted NBC to cancel the show after just two episodes on the air? Plus, it is the marital episode the whole world is watching. We weigh in on the royal wedding. Stick with us as Hollywood Uncensored continues here on Reels Channel. It's TV about <laughs> Thanks for watching Hollywood Uncensored. Want to say hi right now? You can text my name, Sam, to 51551. Maybe you want to say hi to Hal Sparks, so you can see in person world famous improv in West Hollywood. Hal headlines there on May 6th and May 7th. Paul Reiser has headlined at several comedy venues, and Paul, who I think of as a nice, funny guy, was on Leno earlier this week talking about his show getting the axe after just two episodes. I don't take it personally because, listen, I, it's a business decision. And when you're NBC, listen, right. it's a big company. When you are in, at a, you know, the last place network, you don't want to jeopardize that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's a funny line, but yeah, let's be crazy. very honest. This show was awful. Wow. Horrible. Carolyn, we're not picking on Paul, but sometimes you see a show on the air and you have to wonder, how in the world did it get on the air? In the first place, I, well, somebody knew somebody who knew somebody. I, you know, I mean, those decisions are obviously made in higher floors over lots of martinis. <laughs> um, but sitcoms are so expensive to produce, and there is so much else out there for our consumption on Twitter, on YouTube, on Facebook. I mean, you know, you, you can get your media, your, your media anywhere that it, you, have to, you have to come out of the gate and be a thoroughbred. Seriously, or you will be yanked, obviously. But I think there's also an element, though, that it's the mad about you track record that got that show on the air and got it bumped ahead of maybe other things that deserve to be you know, uh, get uh, get a better shot. Every year, each of the studios, you know, in their television divisions... They decide, don't they? Yeah, they, they say, well, this they, one. They crank out 10, right. you know, pilots, and they present them to the networks for a narrow series of slots, and it chokes this bottleneck to two, it's just, which is really actually killing the networks more than anything because there's so many valuable shows that don't see the light of day and then and and the studios are getting savvy and creating web series out of them and blowing them that way right. and they're showing up on Netflix and these impo you get the crappiest time slot and yet your show becomes a hit long term but even yeah. if you are a thoroughbred like that show Lone Star, which was a great show, and critics loved it. This was the show, the, the Texas show, right. that came out in September. Well, how many, how many episodes I think did it was, I think it was three or four, but and, and, and some suit will say, hey, you know what? Ultimately, the audience is always right. Yeah. The audience is, right. The Office wasn't a hit, though, out no, of the gate. No, I was going to no. say, I mean, thank God we were, <laughs> uh, thank God Friends had ended before The Office began, because I don't think I'd be sitting here. Um, mm -hmm. I'd probably be waiting on you. But, you know, it's... <laughs> that's, it's just, <laughs> that's the spirit. <laughs> right. Okay, no, I really, really got great self-esteem. Anyway, um, but, you know, it's like, it's, uh, but I also think it's ironic that uh, all this comes up on Jay Leno, who had this show that kind of right. was the thing that sort of screwed up the whole <laughs> NBC. Totally. Yeah. And, totally. And Conan, wow. uh, arguably, who he was having all this mash with... Right. Stunk for the first two years, essentially. Like he, it was on these thirteen-week right, cycles, right. and people that's said every thirteen right. weeks they're going to get rid of the right. show. Yeah, it's very right. awkward, right. and he's not warm. And, and and there was a narrow. I was one of the narrow crowd that really liked what he was doing, but I knew where he was going, not where he was. And and if you're just going on where an audience, you know, 
picks up a show right at the front. Like I, I like the show, or I don't like the show. It's completely unfair to the creative arc well, that creates the show. Well, the, the audience, the attention span of the audience, because we, uh, because again, we have so much at our fingertips. I don't know though. Instantly. I, 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 you, you, you hear that, you you hear have that to, from you network. You have to get that. You have to get the attention. You hear that from networks a lot. But then you look at what's really winning a lot of times. A and E running six episodes of Criminal Minds or, or Law and Order in a row, and people locking in and watching the whole thing. People buying entire bricks of DVDs right. and watching them in a weekend, and yet on Monday. Day, the same executive who did the same thing ever, all the fans are doing will come in on money and go, you know, people just don't have the attention span. They just don't have the attention span. Like, you're talking about I just watched nine <laughs> hours of that show on Saturday. That's, that's how I was with Carnival. I, watched it's like I didn't watch one episode when it was airing, and we watched the entire thing Strangers in two nights. Strangers with Andy. We also we want it when we want it. We need to evolve. It's this is like, mm -hmm. no one's listening to what, what the real people are doing. I mean, that yeah. you bring up a point, and it's... Yeah. It's and a new way to watch a show. It is. And also, if, if the corral, if there were if there were more shows in the corral, I mean, if they only have two or three shows so to pick a week, from... You're, if you're Tuesday and 7, and you're Thursday at 8, are the only things that are up for grabs this year... And you have all these studios with all these great creative people coming up with eight episodes and then trying to shoehorn them into these two slots. The two that get in there don't match the demographic spot that those networks have built. It doesn't mean the other stuff was crap or if that stuff even deserved to go there. That's the problem with the issue. You know, uh, and and that's why the show went away. As we, there, got we, the definitive uh, there we go. As we continue here, they walk down the aisle. But did William and Kate have our support or our cynicism? The never jaded Hollywood Uncensored continues here. <laughs> <laughs>